living your life to your fullest, uh, but being true to yourself and living it with integrity. Again, that's something that I learned from my parents. Hello and welcome to the Come Alive podcast. I'm your host, Mehrmi Chandani. So I have a very special guest with me today and I'm excited to be with her. She is the wise chairperson and retail director of the Isa Saleh Al Gurk Group, which is a conglomerate of 27 companies here in UAE. She is the chairwoman of Business Network Young Arab Leaders UAE, where she promotes entrepreneurship, education, and youth development. She has been advocating a greater role for women in business. She has launched the Muna Al Gurk Scholarship at London Business School, supporting female students studying in schools, MBA and executive MBA programs. She is on the board of several non-profit organizations. And I welcome Muna Isa Al Gurg with me today. Welcome Muna on the show. I thank you for your time. I'm super grateful to be spending these moments with you. Thank you, Meher. It's a pleasure to be here with you. So I want to start with the beautiful quotes you have written. Most of us live two lives, the life we live and the unlived life within us. What does this mean to you? For me, really, that's all about fulfilling your dreams, fulfilling the life that you intentionally would like to live. Uh, and it's so important to be authentic to yourself. So really, I feel that it's important for us to reflect on those dreams and those aspirations to live a full life. And obviously, life is a journey. We know that, right, Maher? Absolutely, absolutely. So what do you do to reflect upon this life within us and life that we have to live as a personality? I would say, you know, you have to fulfill the roles given to you, be it of a mother, be it of a daughter, be it of a leader. So this is something we are not able to run away from most of the time in society. True. So that's the life we have to live. Mm -hmm. And then there is a life we would like to live. Mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you work on this? And how, how, what's your perception of this beautiful journey? Look, it definitely takes time. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, the destination is definitely there. But to reach that destination is a journey, right? How aligned are your personal values with that of your organization? I think uh, if we reflect on our own values, so speaking about values, speaking about what is important to us, and if I were to speak about where we have uh, really reached those values and, and you know come to what values are important to us, it really was with the founder of the Isa Saleh al group, who is my late father. Um, he instilled so many good values in us, uh, one being uh, compassion. Uh, and compassion, and it, it, that really reflects in the philanthropy and the giving that we do. So I spent decades really seeing my father doing so, met, so much giving um, and giving back to the community. Uh, so I feel that that really instilled great values in us, and, and you know, that is within his foundation and within our company. I think also integrity. So living your life to your fullest, uh, but being true to yourself and living it with integrity. Again, that's something that I learned from my parents. Um, being true to what you believe in, uh, but doing it really with integrity. And again, I think within our organization, um, we uh, have a very good uh, reputation, fortunately, to be ethical uh, business partners. And again, that reflects personally uh, I feel with myself. Uh, personal growth, again. Um, Absolutely. You know, uh, I, if I were to really talk about, you know, my personal growth, at every decade of my life, there was some personal growth that was happening. And again, that was encouraged by uh, my late father. And I feel that, uh, you know, in my 20s, there was a certain education that I went through, which was my undergrad. In my 30s, it was my MBA, but it was also a fellowship program uh, that was about the Good Society with the Aspen Institute. And again, that really helped me reach, um, you know, to understand what I am truly passionate about, which, which is about women and girls in the Arab world. So again, personal growth at every stage of our lives are so important because I feel that uh, that, again, allows us to reach that destination. So last but not least, really, is courage. 
uh, that value again is something that was instilled by the founder, uh, which is my my late father, and and I think that he really told us it's important to take that leap in life, to have the courage uh, to take that leap, and again that is a value that I feel has really impacted me in my life. I I absolutely agree. Courage is something so important. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to know as women, I know you are three uh, sisters who are uh, running the entire organization. So how did that feel like? What did courage means coming from the Arab world to you? Mm -hmm. How did you deeply understand his message? I think for sure, uh, we, you know, it's a very unique sort of organization with three women at the C-suite level, at the top board level. Um, and so from that perspective, I feel, you know, the country itself is very actually encouraging of women. Uh, the UAE's leadership is very encouraging of women. Um, so I think that from that perspective, we were unique, uh, but also blessed to have the support uh, of the country. But going back to even the, you know, giving back to the community, um, we're quite active from that perspective. So I feel, again, that does take courage, though, uh, because you need to be able to say, you know what, I, you know, I, I am here to serve. Um, what can I, how can I serve? Uh, so, again, that took courage in a man's world. Because, yes. You know, we, although we were unique within our organization, uh, in the outside world, we were a min- we are a minority as women, you know. Yes. And so that does take courage for sure, but it is very very rewarding. I can imagine, and I can only imagine how beautiful it might it would be to be the daughter of your father, who was so forward thinking. In today's time, of course, I understand how men support the woman, but in yeah. a few years ago, or rather a few decades ago, it was not the norm. It was not the norm to give that these learnings, values to women and let them lead the organization. True, true, absolutely. So absolutely. that's fantastic. That's lovely. And you also say something very interesting. The key to making real change in retail is recognizing your limitations and not wishing, hoping, or deluding yourself into thinking you are bigger, stronger, faster, and smarter. Who came up with this and what does this mean to you? I think uh, it's something that I recently read that really resonated with me uh, because I've worked for the last two decades in retail. Um, And if you're not ever evolving, if you're not innovative, if you're not growing within the retail sector uh, and, you know, equally learning new skills, uh, then you're going to be left out. You know, and there's no point in deluding yourself within the retail sector to say that, you know, I know it all. You need to go out there, you need to speak to your customers and you need to know what are the challenges and, you know, what the good and the bad. Uh, So that's where I feel that um, it's important to have that communication. It's important to ever evolve. Um, And and, uh, you at the end of the day, you want to give your customer the best service. So, so with that in mind, mind you yeah. you want to be ever evolving rather than yeah. being the best, the smarter, yeah. the better and yeah. beautiful. It's yeah. so, so, so beautiful. Mm-hmm. So what does it mean to be an influential woman in the Arab world? Right. Well, firstly, I'm humbled that, uh, you know, you have given me this title. So. <laughs> Not me. It's like <laughs> Forbes and everybody else. So thank you very Such much. a beautiful title. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, and, and, uh, with every title really comes a responsibility. Uh, and I feel that um, um, the responsibility lies upon us. If we have been given that, you know, that title as being influential or impactful, what do we do with that? Okay. Correct. And I feel that, um, uh, you know, uh, women, I feel in the Arab world have always been strong. However, uh, recently what has happened is that economies have grown countries have changed and i feel that with this comes a reflective stage for women women are now reflecting on all those you know opportunities out there as you can see women are no more just you know uh, teachers or what they used to be in the 80s and the 90s now there's great opportunity whether they can be entrepreneurs um, pilots, uh, lawyers, judges, uh, businesswomen, yes. anything. Uh, you, you know, the world is your oyster. And so in uh, the Arab world, you can tell that women are reflecting on on, on these, uh, you know, 
different phenomena that are happening. And so if I can mentor uh, in mentor women or invest in women's ideas and help women, you know, reach their best potential. I feel that I have succeeded in my role. Yeah, as a human, as a soul, I believe on this journey, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to be, it's beautiful to have the time and again, the courage to be doing this. Yeah. It's amazing. I'm I'm so in awe of all that you are doing, really. I mean, I hope I can also <laughs> contribute wholeheartedly with courage. Thank you. To society as well. Thank you. And you will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So as you know, my thesis has been self-love and how self-love helps us become better at what we do. And it's also the relationship that we have with ourselves that determines the quality of every other relationship in life. So I'd like to hear your perspective on this and how has your relationship with yourself helped in all areas of your life? So as you rightly said, Meher, I mean, self-love is a magnet towards, you know, people respecting you more, people loving you more. It's the aura that you give out because you have given yourself that space to self-love. Um, for me personally, it's about disconnecting from anything that I work on that is, you know, to do with work or anything, any tasks uh, and giving myself that space alone, whether it be uh, reading a book before I sleep at night or whether it be um, boxing, which I love, which I started four years ago. Again, that's something I love to do. That's I do it, you know, obviously with a trainer, but as in that's for me. Uh, whether it be traveling to the most remote areas in the world, I'm very adventurous that way. Uh, so again, that's very fulfilling for me. Um, and I think, you know, all the above really, uh, it's time for me to think about myself. And that means that then I have time to give back. Um, and it, it means that I have a lot more positivity inside me uh, to sort of give back. And so... Um, we spoke about, you know, the community work and the philanthropy work that I do, which is very, very rewarding. Um, and I feel that, again, that has really helped me uh, in terms of fulfilling my own really um, sort of uh, personal goals and also being very comfortable in my own skin. Absolutely. Yeah. So is this something that was instilled in you since the childhood or is this something you became aware of later in life like you know the importance of self-love because a lot of people I still meet are not aware of self-love they're not aware that how they can serve themselves first and then serve others yeah I think a lot of people confuse self-love with uh, buying things exactly this is where I wanted to get yes. to yes uh, um, and so something materialistic will give them that fulfillment and no doubt, there is a certain short-term fulfillment that comes yes, with that. Yes, short-term. <laughs> but if you're, you know, if you're looking for that deep, long-term fulfillment uh, inside you, deeply inside you, um, it's so important to kind of give back, uh, you know, to the community. And it can be in small ways and it can be in big ways. It could be that, for example, you know you're good at something and you mentor one person per year. That's giving back. Absolutely. You know, it doesn't, you know, giving back need not be in millions of, you know, dirhams. Uh, it can be giving back your time. It can be, uh, you know, and it could be as big as building your own foundation or whatever it may be. But that is so important because if you continuously do that, then inside of you, you will feel fulfilled. Absolutely. And what are the other ways of self-love you depict or you... Uh, do for yourself, I would say. Like, you know, how do you practice self-love within you? If I feel that I need, uh, I mean, all the above that we spoke about is something that I do quite consistently. But uh, if I feel that, again, you know, there is a stressful period, you need to kind of reflect again uh, and be calm, uh, then I would say uh, meditation, you know, uh, that's something that helps. Um, and, and that certainly has you know helped me um, wonderful yeah that's so, so true yeah so that's something that again making time for yourself yes in, in, absolutely you know, to meditate and that's beautiful yeah. and and even
be more awareness on meditation sure. in yeah. leaders especially because yeah. it's the more the more med- we meditate i think the more we we become like yeah. and we can lead authentically and truly correct yeah because so, you're at a good headspace yes yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. so in my next book i'm talking a lot about love and compassion in leadership teams in leadership how we can pass this on to our team for them to feel fulfilled at work mm. so what would you want to share with us on that so this year we launched the women at esaic um uh, you know program which was really uh focusing on women focusing on their issues um and really we we sent out a survey to ask what women go through what are the challenges what are so i think um what i've seen so far through our workshops and our you know the program that programs that we are uh, introducing to uh, our female employees uh that there's so much more that they are understanding about themselves uh, and that took compassion from our side right it took us to kind of uh feel for uh what women go through and and the idea really is to get more women to reach that c suite level you know their best potential within our group beautiful uh, and so one of the uh policies that we changed w- was the maternity leave um we found that 45 days is certainly in this day and age not enough we are not legally binded by the country but we did it because it was right and so we changed it to 90 days paid leave uh and Amazing. that has made such a big difference uh to the women who you know came back into the organization they felt so uh fulfilled uh they felt respected uh and and so i think that uh, again that came from a uh from an uh, the core value of compassion that's beautiful yeah. and it's so important to have that so what i also believe in is we cannot be the be two different people at work and at home if you are a loving mother you have to be loving towards your team correct so yeah, what absolutely. you would yeah. this would probably be the same mission right because you if you you know it's not enough so you are giving this to them absolutely yeah so i mean it's again it's thinking about people as human beings uh you know not people as uh just there to fulfill a role or to fulfill those certain kpis human beings are working within your organization they are people with emotions you know let's find out what people go through what are their challenges in order for them to be the most productive So thank you for watching this episode of the Come Alive podcast with Muna Isa Al Gurg. I hope you enjoyed the show as much I enjoyed being here with her. If you've liked the show, please leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcast and Spotify and please don't forget to share it with whoever needs to hear it. Leave us a like and comment on YouTube, hit the notification bell and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you and lots of love.